Airfix's 135th Tiger 1 interior leaves a lot of room for improvement, which is why today we're going to be adding armor texture to the interior and wiring some of the components. Since I'm only doing the interior today, I skipped the first couple steps, which was adding the outside torsion or the exterior part of the torsion bars and immediately went to installing the interior ones. Now they're not great, they don't really fit into the pins that they're aligned with, and so I just cut them off. I decided that it was uh, too much of a hassle to fit and sand everything, so I just decided to cut the tabs off and put them in where I wanted them. If you remember from the kit review, this kit is covered in ejector pin marks, so I used my hobby knife as a palette knife and filled those and then sanded them down with some fine sandpaper. After texturing and adding details to the back plate, it was ready for installation. But the back armory plate really doesn't fit very well, and so I had to push up on the two fender areas, make sure the back was lined up correctly because the back form for it will not actually guide it into the correct place, glue it down very gently, and hold it there for a couple uh, minutes, make sure that it was flush, and then move on. As you can see, the two sides had a little bit of sag to them, and so I had to push them up to make that right angle. Now I'll show you how to make that texture. So you take Tamiya cement and the putty. I'm using Tamiya cement, you can use any type you want really. Just so long as it'll uh, thin the, the putty and also melt the plastic just a little bit. It helps it make it look more realistic. So all you do is thin the putty down with the cement and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna be working on this side of the firewall. And what you wanna do is Make sure you have a very thin layer. You want to be able to actually see some of the original color showing through for at least the first layer. So I get a bit, uh, quite a bit on my paintbrush. I put it on and then kind of blend it through the whole thing, picking it up from wet parts and moving it around through the whole model. As you can see, I do spend a bit of time refining that. Um, and you do have to be very careful around details because if it does splatter, as you can see, I'm being very careful, if it does splatter onto the detail, you can see it. Make sure that your application is in a stippling motion to get that armor texture. You can't just brush it on because it'll leave brush marks and it won't look realistic. So make sure it's stippled on in a very thin but continuous layer. One of the final and crucial steps to this process is to lightly sand each surface that you've worked on. You'll be able to know it's done when you can see some of the Tamiya plastic putty will be a little bit darker and the effect will take on a mottled look.
After that, if you see some things that you do want to clean up, you can take a tiny bit of acetone and clean it up that way. Um, be careful though, because acetone will melt the plastic. Next, we're going to start work on the engine. As you can see here, I'm assembling the engine block, which I didn't notice was backwards before I started. I could have sworn it was the right way in the book. I only realized it later and was unable to fix it at the moment. After my rendition of the engine block was done, I started adding different bear, uh, cans and uh, looks like the oil tank to the side. As you can see, just little small details. These had to be filled quite a bit. They didn't fit very well at first. After that, I started making my own modifications. The exhaust pipes weren't long enough, so I took some styrene and uh, extended them as you can see. Then I used a hypodermic needle to make a hole in that box, whatever it is, on the engine and fit a wire to it. Now I gave myself a little bit of extra wire so that I could make it run behind the engine and disappear where no one could see it. Then I started bending it to references. I don't think I can show those here. Um, but if somebody knows whether you can actually show a military reference photo on YouTube or not, please let me know in the comments. Uh, while you're doing so, tell me if you liked the video, give me a like, and if you're feeling brave, please subscribe. Now, these do take quite a while to get right. Um, I think I worked for 10 or 15 minutes on each one and they're smaller than a quarter but hey that's modeling and if you want to get it right you got to take your time after i finished bending both I used Loctite super glue and a applicator I made out of wire and an old paintbrush handle to attach the wires to the engine. As you can see, the modifications definitely paid off. Um, the extended exhaust pipes make it look like it continues all the way back to the back armor plate and the wires definitely add their own sense of realism to the model. Next I started assembling the radiators, radiator fans, and fuel tanks. I actually didn't glue any of the engine deck down, that includes the radiators, uh, because I wanted to be able to paint them individually. Next we start work on the steering assembly and also the transmission. Now a lot of these details are going to be covered up unless you're going to do a cutaway, which I'm not planning on doing since I can't really use a Dremel that well. <laughs> um, 
so I just decided not to worry too much about it, just to make sure it fit well, so that the model goes together well. The transmission did have a lot of fit issues. The parts were bowed out in some places, and so you had to sand them down. I used a straight file so that the, if I was going to use a soft file, it would conform to the surface, and I wanted to avoid that. After finishing the transmission, I started work on the first set of ammo boxes, as well as the whole compartment, uh, or the fighting compartment floor. The larger of the two ammo boxes did need modification to allow them to fit correctly with the hole. To do that, I cut off the front set of guide horns in the hole to allow the box to fit flush. I did not glue the fighting compartment floor so that I could paint that separately along with the transmission. While it does have good details, the radio does not fit well together, and you can see there are some pretty large seam lines and uh, a lot of just badly fitting parts. Now, it'll look okay if you can see it only through the hatch, but if I was going to make this a cutaway, I'd have to spend a lot more time on this, but I'm not, so it's okay. As you can see, the radio operator seat was pretty boring. So I decided to use a Dremel on it to make it give it a more fabric look to it. First, I thought about how the radio operator would sit in it and what it would look like right after he got out. And of course, being a modeler, you always want to exaggerate an effect instead of tone it too far down. Of course, this doesn't mean, you know, slap a ton of rust on your vehicle and call it good. It's still controlled, but you want to be able to make sure that you can see it in that scale. So what I did was I uh, carved out an indentation in the middle and then carved two leg or uh, indentations where the legs would have gone. Then I worked on softening the outer edge a little bit, making it a bit more rough. And after I was happy with this result, I took a sanding sponge or sanding file or whatever you want to call it and just sanded down the hard edges because a Dremel will leave hard edges. Now you don't want to sand it down too far because it will destroy all the detail. So once you're happy with that, all you have to do is cover in a light coat of liquid cement and you're good. So once I retextured the driver's seat and added the details we haven't glued in yet, we were ready to start on the turret. Again, it has a lot of ejector pin marks on it, and so I filled those, cleaned them off with my hobby knife, and textured over them to make sure they were 100% gone. I use what I'm going to texture on the outside as a guide for what I'm going to texture on the inside, even if it won't show up. It's a good technique just to practice before you start work on the outside. Once the turret walls were done, I was ready to instantly start upgrading the parts inside. Now the fuse box is very basic and actually has quite a few wires, uh, more than I did put in, coming out of it in the real tank. So I added the main one, the main power line for the fuse box, as well as three top ones, but I don't show those, you'll be able to see those in the completed picture. 
Remember to be careful while using a hypodermic needle as it is supposed to go under your skin. Um, it's a good drill bit, but it can also be very dangerous. I again used copper wire to simulate that conduit and made sure to fix it by drilling a hole through the bottom of the turret. Now, I think that looks very good. Some people prefer lead because it takes on a more relaxed look, but really I can't see any problems with this. Now, for some reason, Airfix decided to put the pin marks on the front of this map box or whatever it is. So I filled those by using some Tamiya putty and a cotton swab. Evidently, that applies it very well. Now, it does stick out quite a bit, but they're fairly deep holes, so I'm not too worried. Now, for some reason, my videography is much better for the turret, so I was going to show you my process for doing a seat again. As you can see, I start with the Dremel, making an indentation, making sure those sides are rounded, because for some reason, Airfix Academy decided not to round a fabric seat. That's an interesting problem, but it's not too hard to fix. As you can see, I work at it slowly because it's very easy to ruin a seat this way. The way I used to do this was I would grind away the whole cushion and replace it with Tamiya putty. But I find this way much easier and much more sustainable, as you can do it quickly and it doesn't cost you a lot of putty to do. So after I finish and I like what it looks like, I rub away the melted plastic or as much as I can, and then I sand off the excess. This helps smooth the edges because a Dremel will leave more of a geometrical shape than a smooth edge. I'm sorry that it comes out of the camera a little bit, or camera frame a little bit. So then, once it's a bit more smooth, to finish it out, I take Tamiya putty, or a cement, and just clean it up a little bit. Now this will take care of any ridges that the sanding paper did not get, sanding stick did not get, and it'll also give it a nice finish for painting. And as you can see, the result is quite rewarding. After adding a couple more details, I started on the basket support which was a little bit fiddly because they didn't really have very good guides for it. So once I put them in, I was very careful to make sure they were straight, and then I put them onto the basket of floor to make sure that they lined up perfectly for final assembly. After that was done, I started work on the other side. And as you can see, it went together pretty easily. I did have to clean a lot of flash off of the commander's pistol holster, but other than that, it was pretty easy. I then attached it to the turret floor again to make sure it was straight. The detail inside is okay. It's not a main model, but it's good enough for the price I paid for it. After that, I started work on the manual traverse, which I'm going way too fast. Um, <laughs> I was working much slower than this. Hopefully you guys don't mind. This kit has almost no guide pins or markings or anything so it's very hard to get it together in the correct orientation so really you just have to know what the tank is supposed to look like which I recommend the chieftain he makes good videos on it next I started the seat which has the elevation control on it I retextured it and the attachment is very weak and not very exact I ended up applying them step separately because they were very hard to keep together and keep straight. So first I put in the manual traverse and then added the seat afterwards. So once I installed the gunner seat, I, applied, I added his azimuth here. I think it's an azimuth. If it's something else, please let me know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, please give this video a like and maybe even subscribe if you're feeling brave.
So once that was done, I added the commander seat, which again had a lot of room and was hard to get straight. I tried to reference it off of the front of the turret, just make sure that the flat part was straight. I also textured this seat too, so all the seats that you can see are textured, and I think it does add a lot of detail to the model. After that, I added all the details to the floor of the turret basket. As you can see, the jerry cans. Power traverse. A box, I'm not sure what it is. It might be a battery or a toolkit. One of the two. If anybody knows, please let me know. Fire extinguisher. Which actually is a very nice looking detail. Sometimes they get it wrong and for some reason the Academy for all of its problems in this kit did not. As you can see I'm now building the 88. Uh, it does have a big hole in the middle of the barrel but hopefully that won't be too visible through a hatch or something. These really weren't too hard to install. Um, but in the end, I figured out that I had installed them wrong. For some reason, Academy's instructions aren't the clearest, and so even if it does look like a guide pin, double check with a picture at the end because something might not fit well. Once I was done cleaning up, I think the recoil dampers, I started attaching the, uh, the breech. Now, the problem with the breech is that it had some severe um, deformities in it. Here's the final assembly of the gun. It doesn't look too bad. There were a lot of uh, deformities and pin marks, so we had to fix those. After that, I worked on the turret roof, which has these braces, as well as breathing tubes, looks like periscopes. And also I modified the air vent there with that wire, since it's fairly prominent on a real vehicle. Hopefully you don't mind too much that I'm speeding everything up. If we were gonna watch the whole thing, it'd be about three hours long. So uh, <laughs> hopefully this is okay with you guys. Let me know if you'd rather have a more abridged version or if you like seeing all the details that go into it. Okay, so with that I started installing the periscopes on the cupola. There are five of them and you have to be careful to make sure that the vision slits line up with the periscope blocks. With that, we're done. Airfix's, or Academy's actually, kit is okay. It has a lot of detail, so long as you can clean it up and retexture it. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys will like this video. If you like the work I do, please let me know by giving me a like and subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you for watching this far, and I'll be releasing more videos soon. I had to replace the air valve in my airbrush, so if that comes in time, we'll be doing a painting and weathering tutorial on the interior of this tank. If not, we'll be working on the hatches, building those and detailing them. If you guys do have a preference, please let me know in the comments below, and thank you for watching.